We are the chosen of Asurian, beloved of the gods, and heroes to the world. Our armies are the finest in creation, swift where our foes are lumbering, cultured where they are barbaric. Give no thought to failure nor defeat. We are the children of Ulthuan, and we shall prevail. Hello everyone to this War Master High Elf Spearman tutorial. The miniatures are provided by Excellent Miniatures 10mm Infantry Stripes that I want to show you how to paint in an easy but effective way with some eye candy like these jewelry or gemstones and maybe something like the wooden texture on the spear shafts. At all time you can leave the tutorial or you can leave the painted steps where they are to, that you don't want to go any further but if you want to follow it to the end you can do these results that are shown here. As you might have recognized I'm not an English speaking native person so I hope you might excuse some mispronunciation or wrong placement of words. I attached this miniature stripe on a painting handle and spray painted it with white spray paint and start on all the armor bits with a dark metal tone, true metallic metals, Iron Warrior by Citadel, the helmet the shoulder pads, the back of the chest piece, these dragon scale skirt thingy and the spear's tip. Just apply the color on all those areas. Next up is Lead Belcher, second color and already an highlight. I try to focus on the sharp edges and on the upper parts of the metal bits so I got the first highlight and if you want to can leave the silver metal bits at this stage. For the whole tutorial it's very important that I say to you stay focused and paint only the areas that you need to paint cause sometimes there are areas like the white shields or the cloth on the spears that stays white and you can save time if you don't overspill too much. To finish the metal areas there is Balthazar gold on all these things that should be brassy in the end like the mu musician's horn, the banner piece or these half moons on the spear shafts. Before I apply some shade, I will base coat all the spear shafts. This is a Steel Legion Trap as a base coat for these lighter wooden texture that I apply later. If you want to go heavy into the 6th edition of Warhammer Fantasy, I would suggest to apply a real bright red tone for the spear shafts for nostalgic purposes. To give all these previous painted areas some definition and some shadow, I apply a mix of Agrix Earthshade and Lamihan Medium in a 50-50 ratio on all these areas. Silver and golden metals and the spear shaft. Just prevent heavy pooling on some areas and you're good to go. If you spill over on the gloves, it's not the baddest thing to do, but you should keep away from the shields, the cloak that the champion wore, and uh, all these tiny cloth stripes. Next up, I will fix some of these overspills 
because it's not at the end of the world if you do so. With Ulthuan Grey around the shields and on all the cloth parts, that would stay white in the long run. And Ulthuan Grey is a great color for this cause. We always, with this tutorial, want to go to a more off-white color, color variation. After all, the one gray has dried fully, I apply some shades to the white areas and therefore I use a contrast paint. Nearly the only occasion I use Games Workshop's contrast paints is to give white areas some shadows in the recesses cause it's dry out in a smooth gray color gradient on all these recesses and give the surfaces some of the nicest gray tint that I've ever seen. So as you can see here, just apply Apothecary White on all the bits that would remain white on the models. The second reason why I use Apothecary White is that I want to avoid these extremely bright white areas because I think they don't work with this miniature's scale very much. So I go over an, an off-white grayish bluish color with Uthuan Grey and a white scar highlight in the future. After the shade has dried, I apply the remaining colors. These leather pieces on the male skirts are painted in blue. Also, some of the cloth pieces and the crests or heraldry on the shields. Cantor blue is the way to go for me because it's a good dark well saturated blue tone you can go to macrack blue or some colors like those if you don't like these very saturated blue tone but in my occasion my client for whom i paint these miniatures like the color very much just apply blue on all these surfaces and don't overspill that much because it's not the end of the world you can repair overspill but you can save time and as we know war master is a game of many many regiments and you must paint many many of these mincha stripes before you can play with a full painted army before i go on to the gloves i paint the wooden texture with some vertical lines and rock out the flesh on the spear shafts as you can see here i do this on this time now so i can paint the gloves better and don't have to paint in this texture later and uh, need to handle with overspill on the brown of the gloves that would be applied later So after all these wooden textures are done, we go to the mentioned gloves. Painted in a dried bark, a nice dark desaturated brown tone. Reminds me of chocolate and chocolate is good, so this color is good also. Paint all the gloves, the little pouches that the musician and the champion got on there hips and 
apply this color to the base to give the whole infantry stripe another feeling, a more complete feeling and that you can take a back, better picture of the finished result for your before your inner eye. The next color to apply is Cadian Flesh Tone. This is applied on all the fleshy bits. In this case, it's only the face that's shown through the helmet. Just apply that with simple brush strokes. One controlled brush stroke from the left, one controlled brush stroke from the right. Then you might flip up the miniature or flip it on its side and paint the rest of the fleshy bits on the nose and on the chin that's shown as you can see here. Before I apply a shade to the fleshy bits, I pick out corn red gemstones to save some time, to save up the drying time of Cadian Flesh Tone. So, corn red on all the gems on the shields, the banner, and the champion's helmet and the musician's waist. Up to Reikland Flash Shade, just splotch it into the face opening of the helmet to give the face some definition. And as always, avoid too much pooling. The next step is our first highlight on the shields. It's Uthuan Gray and I apply it from the outer edges to the center and on the upper edge to rework some of these bluish gray color variation and leave some of these shaded parts around the crest. And on the cloth there are some sharper highlights as you can see here on the shafts cloth and also the ropes are painted like this. Next up it's white scar, some sharp edge highlights with very, very short lines or only some dots on the edges. And some of these lines are drawn into the shield to give the illusion of some scrapes or scratches, some kind of battle damage. Some light points on all these upper cloth parts and you're good to go to the next color. It's Ally Tok Blue for all the blue parts, as you might have guessed already. Some are applied on these crests. There is one kind of symbolic feather left and right, and one of these thick feathers on the downside, and to the wings, feathers, edges. The cloth on the spear is painted nearly identical to the white cloth and these leathery parts on the male skirt is just applied. A bit of Ally Talk Blue as you might see right now. Next up it's an edge highlight with Russ Grey mostly on the shield's crest, but also some highest color points on the spear's cloth. I take rust gray to give it a desaturated look instead of something like Fenrisian gray or another blue tone that would be too striking on this miniature's scale, I think. The whole secret of painting such small miniatures is not overdo your highlights. Keep them simple, keep them straight and not too striking from a distance so that they don't look like clowns. On the banner I apply those rust gray parts like uh, scratches and wrecked up edges as you might see here, that this is uh, maybe a 
battle-worn standard that is carried with proud by these regiments. Next up, the color of the faces need some more definition. A small dot of Cadian flesh tone on the noses and on the upper lip and the chin. And that's it. You may be paint in the eyes mid administratum gray or dawnstone, but I don't got the time and the financial resources for this commission, so I leave the eyes at this point and I think it's uh, look great already. There was the step with the dried bark to repair some mess up and the next is the highlight on all these leathery gloves and pouches with Morn Fang Brown. Just highlight the fingers and the gloves upper parts that's more to the arm. I don't know the English word right now in Germany. It's called the Stulpe. To give some love to the metal parts I paint all the previously paint bought the gold areas with some rune lord brass. This gives a good true metallic highlight and adds an effect of brass to the color that fits very well on this scale. The banners crests, all these small pieces of half moons and the trumpet that the musician wield to give more morale to this unit. Next up, Rune Fang Steel to give some edge highlighting to the silvery metal parts. There are some edges on the simple individual scales, there are some edges on breast pieces, on the helmets on the cutouts where the faces are placed and uh, on these upper parts of the helmets. Some edges here and there on the shoulder piece and very important some edges on the blade or on the spear's tips to give them a more worn look as you might see here after I paint the helmet center. The highlights on the weapons are placed like they are a bit worn weapons where the maybe light rust effect is scraped off on the edges by uh, continuous usage and there is this bright shining edge and don't forget the middle section of these blades where there is an edge also. also. This technique can be applied on the sword's blade also. On the sword's, sword's blade I think it's appropriate to put in some more scrapes and lines that suggest heavy usage. Next up, some love for the gemstones. I rework the red surfaces with corn red again, and then I apply my standard gemstone technique. This one is painted like the following steps. Paint the lower half of the gemstone with Mephiston red. For this purpose I pick the lower right half 
course I want my uh, reflex color on the upper left. Then apply Wild Rider Red on the lower right third with a round line like you see here. Give a final reflex on the right low hand with Avalon Sunset. Just this small yellow reflex thingy. And after this there is the stark light reflex to be applied with Palette Witch Flash. Just a little point of Palette Witch Flash in the left upper corner of each gemstone. The size of the point will vary with the size of the gemstone, as you might have guessed. And now the miniatures are done. But wait, I forgot the hair. Yes, I painted some free hands on the banner and uh, I recognized, oh, there are these hair bits that come out of the helmet and uh, I apply steel legion wrap on all the hair that need to be blondish and some dried bark on the hair that needs to be dark like brown and on all these little leather wraps that support the ponytails. Leave the color to dry and pick out Mon Fang Brown, some small lines on the upper parts of the hair structure and on these leather pieces and you're good to go because you don't need to paint 10 or 11 highlight steps for those miniatures. On the blonde hair I go on several direction. There is one, the champion, that got hair with rakat flesh like the uh, wooden texture on the shafts. There are two of these elves that got their hair highlighted with bane blade brown. And one elf that got their hair painted with Karak Stone. And you can, Karak, you can use Karak Stone also to apply another highlight to the hair that is painted before with Baneblade Brown to give it some more variation. And with this step, the miniature is done. You can base them, put some sand on the base, then uh, I've painted the base up with dried bark and dry brushed with Thor Brown, applied some flock, some Rhinox hide base edge painting and the miniature is done. I hope you like what you see and you stay tuned for further War Master tutorials that are supported by excellent miniatures. If you want to stay up Updated and in tune, just leave a sub, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment in the comment section below. Visit Excellent Miniatures, link is in the video description, and say hi there. Dizzy, send me, I would appreciate, cause this way I can get some more free miniatures for such tutorials. Thank you, and keep on wargaming.